So, 40 year old female came with the complaints of heavy menstrual bleeding since 7 to 8 days. Uh, bleeding was increased and uh, up to uses of two pads were there with the passage of clots. Patient came for examination of the pelvic ultrasound. The patient gives an history that uh, she is postmenopausal. The patient is postmenopausal female uh, and the periods are not there since past uh, six months. Three years, I think. So, herein we see that uh, there is a simple cyst. This case is an ideal case to uh, bring about the use of easy descriptors. Uh, here, this is a spot diagnosis. There is no need to think any further. A simple cyst, only one or two comments that I would like to make is that. Uh, So here, uh, here we are seeing the ovary stroma here, and the cyst is arising uh, from the ovary, whereas a compressed stroma of the ovary is seen here. So this has this is a unilocular lesion, unilocular cystic lesion. The stromal part of the ovary should not be uh, missed, uh, misreported as a solid unilocular solid uh, tumor. So, this is not counted as the solid component. While measuring, we have to measure only the dimension of cyst uh, in three planes. And we have to, while measuring the size of the ovary, while measuring the size of the ovary, we have to consider the lesion as well as the ovarian tissue. Having got the image in two planes, now I'll start measuring. Uh, so, So I have taken, uh, while measuring the size of the ovary, I have taken into consideration the uh, cyst also. But while measuring the uh, cyst, I will only measure the uh, cyst, not uh, take into account the uh, uh, ovarian stroma that is seen. So this is a classic uh, case where uh, easy descriptor can be applied. So as I said, when the patient comes uh, with an adenexal lesion, we have to see whether it is unilocular, multilocular, whether there are any papillary projections whether there is any vascularity, any solid elements and whether there is any shadowing and ascites. So this uh, uh, of the six, this fits into a unilocular, uh, unilocular simple cyst and uh, with easy descriptor, it is a uh, simple ovarian cyst. So I will leave it at that. Next case. ठीक है पुष्पुन गया उठो ना Here we present the second case. Uh, she is 14 years old female, came with the pain in abdomen. Uh, the pain was specifically localized in the infraumbilical region with the distension of abdomen since past seven days. The patient had chronic history of pain in abdomen since one month. Uh, the, uh, she had not uh, uh, achieved menses since past two months. Uh, before that, the menses were regular. UPT test was negative. Patient came for ultrasonography for further evaluation.
so as i said in my talk earlier that clinical history is also very important and this patient is obviously looking very cachexic type uh, and she's having pain in abdomen and she is just 14 years of age and as i put my probe on her abdomen i see a large mass here uh it's extending right from the pelvis and going up to the level of the umbilicus so going by the definition of the terms more than 80% of the lesion is showing showing solid tissue so this is a solid mass now uh, i will try to fit this into easy descriptors but no none of the benign easy descriptors uh, can be applied here uh, malignant descriptor of post menopausal uh, uh, patient obviously cannot be applied so now i go to the simple rules so i apply the benign descriptors and malignant descriptors so i find that this lesion is solid it is i measure the size it's obviously more than 10 cm it's coming around 13 to 14 cm then i put on color and i see that it has got high vascularity at places additional feature that i see is as i maneuver my probe is that she has got ascites also so malignant features do apply in this case presence of ascites vascularity score of 4 and so i'll definitely go for a malignant lesion possibly a germ cell tumor her age is only 14 years next step would be to ask for histopathology uh that's it we will further going with the case discussion various cases of the ovarian lesions would be presented and the specific guidelines with regarding to iota would be discussed further good morning everyone Good morning everyone. Today we'll be discussing a few cases of Mullerian anomalies. Good morning everyone today we will be discussing a few cases of mullerian anomalies a 30 year old female came to the ultrasonography opd with a history of heavy menstrual bleeding on her primary usg we will be able to we were able to see a fairly normal sized uterus with a slight indentation in the fundal et
so the patient was uh, diagnosed as a case of arcuate uterus uh, the arcuate uterus is nothing but a, a anatomical variant of the normal and her uh, heavy menstrual bleeding was uh, related to her hormonal problems rather than the structure anomaly of the uterus the next case is a 34 year old female patient prescribed follicular study so on examination we could see on examination we could see there were two endometrial cavities seen and a pa partial septum was seen between the two here we can see again two endometrial cavities were seen range, reaching up to the uh, lower uterine segment and a partial septum was seen between the two the myometrium was common so this case was diagnosed as a case of partial septate uterus a 29 year old female patient with came with a history of multiple abortions on examination we could see a fairly normal sized uterus and a subserosal fibroid in the posterior uh, wall of the uterus on examination on axial views we could see on axial examination we could see that the uterine cavities were two and the separation between the two uteri uh, uh, endometrial cavities was reaching up to the cervix so this case was diagnosed as a case of uterine diadelphus so mullerian anomalies are structural anomalies of the uterus and they can be classified as follows that is the class one that is the uterine hypoplasia or agenesis that is the complete absence of the uterus and the cervix uh, class 2 will be a unicornuate uterus class 3 will be a uterine diadelphus in diadelphus the two uh, uterine uh, segments are completely separate from each other the myometrium the cornua and the endometrium everything is separate and the cervix is well in bicornuate uterus the two endometrial cavities are separate and there's a slight indentation over the fundal et which is uh, less than 1 cm and the myometrium is same in septate uterus there is nothing but a small uh, there is nothing but a septum between the two endometrial cavities but the uterine contour is normal there is no indentation and in arcuate uterus arcuate uterus is nothing but a uh, variant of the uh, normal uh, uterus and there is a slight indentation in the fundus which is less than 1 cm thank you good morning everyone now i will i will be showing some few cases about the benign ovarian lesions uh, so first case is that a case of a 24 year old female patient who came with chief complaints of pain in the lower abdomen on right side here we can see uh, here we can see a well defined uh, anechoic cystic lesion which was less than 10 cm in size which was arising from the right ovary we can see a few follicles that are present in the right ovary here the same lesion which was measuring less than 10 cm in size and anechoic lesion 
uh, on our scene uh, video Here we can see that the lesion is arising from the right ovary and a few solid components can be seen within the lesion along the periphery of the lesion that were measuring less than 7 mm and uh, uh, the anechoic lesion. So according to the IOTA guidelines, the lesion was characterized as a B2 lesion which is a unilocular cyst less than 10 cm in size with the presence of solid component which is measuring less than 7 mm. Now case 2 was a case of a 22 year old female patient who came with chief complaints of pain on the right side of lower abdomen which was aggravated before menstruation. Here we can see a uh, well defined multiloculated lesion that was arising from the uh, that was present in the right atanexa. It was multiloculated, it was containing uh, uh, multiple septas within and uh, it showed a homogeneous ground glass uh, type of echoes within which were uh, present throughout the uh, lesion and it di uh, sh uh, did not show any vascularity on color Doppler. Here uh, the same lesion we can see it is arising uh, it was present in the right at Nexa multiloculated with homogeneously dispersed echoes a ground glass type of echoes within the lesion. So according to the IOTA guidelines, the lesion was characterized as the B4 lesion which is a smooth multiloculated lesion with uh, size measuring less than 10 cm and it came out to be an endometrioma. Thank you.